A Cheringham Mystery, Dead in the Water. Written by Matthew Costello and Neil Richards. Narrated by Neil Dudgeon. Prologue Chapter 1 After the Prom That your lot, Maddie? said Billy Leeper, sliding two pints of lager across the bar, shouting to be heard over the music and noisy crowd. Maddie looked down at the tray of drinks she'd just ordered. A big round, and now she realised she'd forgotten to order her own drink. Sorry, Billy, one more glass of white wine, please. Any old thing will do, long as it's nice and cold. She watched the barkeeper disappear down to the other end of the bar, then looked around. The ploughman's was as packed as she'd ever seen it. Cheringham's favourite local pub, not as posh as the Angel, farther up on the high street, but still the go-to place for any village event. And tonight, there was more than just the usual Friday night crowd. A mob of her fellow teachers had come down after the prom for a well-deserved pint, and some of the now departing pupils were happy to drink with them. She recognised a few of the boys and girls in their smart suits and gowns, knocking back drinks as if they did it every weekend. Well, she thought, they probably do. Here you go, said Billy, adding a glass of white wine to the tray. On the tab. Thanks, Billy. She picked up the tray and turned to go. They're all eighteen, I'm assuming, said Billy, nodding towards the students dotted around the pub. Oh, I'm sure they are, said Maddie, not at all sure, but moving off quickly towards the tables at the rear of the pub. On the way, she passed a crowded table by the dartboard and spotted a few of the lower sixth formers standing with pints and bottles in their hands. Now, this lot definitely weren't eighteen. Should she say something? She could see Callum Brady in the group and Liam Norris and Jake Pawson, the usual suspects as they were known up at the school, in T-shirts and jeans, looking aggressive, even just standing there and drinking, and liable to cause trouble if she told Billy they were under age. They certainly did plenty of that at school. The sooner they were gone, the better. Jake caught her eye, and the whole group stopped talking and turned to look at her. The look, a challenge, as if to say, go on then, just try to get us thrown out, if you've got the balls. She turned away and carried on walking with her tray of drinks to the back of the pub. Damn it, she thought, what kind of coward am I? But when she got to the back room of the pub, she put the encounter with the dartboard crowd to the back of her mind. In the time she'd been gone, her group had grown even bigger. Someone had shoved three tables together. Now there must be nearly twenty teachers and students both, all laughing, joking, telling stories, all glad the year was over. Summer, university, the future, beckoning. She lowered the tray onto the nearest table and everybody cheered and grabbed their drinks. She picked up her white wine and waved to Tim, sitting at the middle of the table, talking to one of his star English pupils, or at least listening to his tipsy rambling. He gave her a long-suffering smile and mouthed, Sorry. The boy had taken her seat. She smiled back and mouthed back, No problem. Here you go, Maddie, came a voice from the end of the table. She turned around. It was Josh Owen, a teacher the kids definitely adored. A free seat next to him. Should she? With a quick glance at Tim, she skirted a group of locals hemmed in by students and threaded her way round to the other end of the large table. I could say I saved it for you, but that would be lying, said Josh. Well, you certainly know how to flatter a girl, so how did you like your first Cheringham prom? Good fun, huh? said Josh. I had some great students in that year, sorry to see them go, nice kids. 
If only they were all nice. Goes with the territory. Maddie took a sip of her wine. You talk to the new head? Not tonight, said Josh quietly. Not the right time. But you are applying for the deputy job? Well, you bet. There's a lot needs changing, and from what I've heard so far, I like her plans. I just hope I'm part of them, said Maddie. You will be, if I've got anything to do with it. She laughed. Hark at you, deputy head, sir, hiring and firing already. You bet. Mind how you behave, Miss Brooks. Always, she said, laughing. She liked teasing Josh, playing with him. He had a sparkle as if he really enjoyed life. Unlike, she couldn't help but look down the table at Tim, still involved in a long, deep conversation. Her boyfriend. How she hated that word. God, she was nearly thirty. Maybe I should start calling him my partner. But do I even want that? Fiancé? Though not official yet. Someone brought another tray of drinks over and everyone started grabbing their refreshed pints and glasses. As she stared, Tim looked over at her. He smiled. She smiled back and had a thought. What if Tim wasn't here? Then the seat next to Tim, empty. With a nod from Tim, she sailed away from Josh. There you are, Tim said. I was just saying that I want to do some real camping trips this summer, get some good long walks in proper treks, you know? She nodded. She noticed Tim looking at her. How does that sound to you? A smile. Yes, uh, shake off the school year sounds great. Tim smiled at that, then turned back to the group. Out of the corner of her eyes, she was aware of Josh getting up from the other end of the table. He looked, for a moment, confused. She watched him head into the front bar and thought, strange. But then she too got lost in the excited talk of summer plans, the precious time away from kids and school. Maddie smiled at the group of girls who now had her penned in a corner, chattering about exams and grades and how totally awesome it would be if they got their first choice of uni. She could see Josh over by a corner table. He seemed to be slugging a beer. How many was that, she wondered, as he scanned the room. And though she was looking in his direction, he didn't give any sign that he'd noticed her. He just kept scanning the packed pub. Looking for what? Or maybe seeing what? Tim came over from the bar, putting an arm around her shoulder. He eased her away from the group of girls. God, thanks, Tim, if I hear one more exam story. But Tim looked concerned. Something up with Josh, he said, nodding across the room. Maddie turned and looked at Josh. I don't know. He's been standing like that for ages. I hadn't really noticed, said Maddie. Think he's had too much? Let me go check on him. She saw Tim walk over, put a hand on Josh's shoulder, who nodded in acknowledgement. But then she saw Josh shake his head. Tim gave another quick pat to Josh's shoulder and walked back. Something wrong, she said. Guess he's just had a lot to drink. Odd, the way he's looking at everyone. I'll keep an eye on him, Tim said. He didn't drive here, at least. I'm sure he's fine. She nodded and followed Tim as he rejoined the main group of teachers. Maddie checked her watch. Nearly eleven. She'd been drinking water for the last hour, ready to go. She looked around the group, Tim and the others all still deep in conversation. She couldn't see Josh. Maybe he's left already, she thought. But then she spotted him in the main bar having a discussion with Billy, which looked more like an argument. Billy shaking his head, Josh looking... Well, even more wobbly, weaving as he banged a hand on the bar, like someone who wanted one more drink and was being denied. Then he turned away from the bar without a drink, and he seemed to be looking at the packed pub as if he didn't know how he got here, what was going on. She thought, could go over, have a word? But then Josh, though still looking unsteady, walked straight towards her as if finally seeing her. He swayed slightly holding on to the table edge as he passed, anchoring his drunken walk, until he planted himself like a tree swaying in a storm right in front of Maddie. Tim, Maddie, he said, been brilliant. The last word of his sentence trailed off. Josh's eyes.